this is a small example where we want you to practice product rule and quotient rule, but using the graph. So basically, you're not giving the functions you can work with, but you're giving the graph of the functions instead. So as you can see, we are working with two functions, u of x and v of x, where u of x is given as a product of f of x and g of x. And v of x is the quotient of f of x and g of x, where f is given in blue and g is given in red, which is actually not a very good idea for the example, because what if uh, a person who is reading this example is colorblinded? Not a very good choice. But anyways, they want us to find derivative of u at 1 and derivative of v at 1. Question mark, question mark, solution. When you stuck with something, always start with things you know. For example, u is given as f times g. Well, then we know that u prime will be a product rule. Product rule gives you derivative of f times copy g plus copy f times derivative of g. Any order is fine, whatever you like. You can put this in the box if you want because we're going to use this. Now, it's pretty simple to find g and f at 1. And why I'm talking about 1? Because we are actually asked to find not just the general derivative, but derivative at 1. So I'm going to write down u prime at 1 is derivative of f at 1 and that is the one it's going to be hard to find well not hard but you will see it's going to be extra step then g at 1 so g is red g is given in red let's see 1 is over here red at 1 is 1 so seems like uh, this one we already can write down as 1 plus f at 1. Let's see, blue is my f. So f at 1 seems like 1 as well. That's actually where they meet, at 1. At 1 they both are 1. But then times derivative of g at 1. So the derivatives are the one we actually need to find from the graph. And how do you find those things? So let me make a special note for this. For example, we are looking for g prime at 1. So again, g is red. I want to start with red one since we started before with red one. And red one is over here, as you can see, at 1. First of all, we see that the function is going down, decreasing. So we kind of can guess that slope should be negative. We're talking about slope right now. And uh, there is a way to find this slopes so we're using we're finding slopes from the graph by doing this imagine a triangle here it is for example this triangle or this triangle or actually any kind of triangle and you just need two points to find the slope m because if you don't remember i'm going to write down over here slope m can be found as second change minus first change in y over second change minus first change in x. So it's basically rise over run, which we already knew before, which means we need to kind of make any two points we want and find this ratio. Any two points means it's nice to have convenient points. For example, this point does not look convenient, so I don't want to. This point does not really look convenient either. I like this point, for example, or actually there are many points which are good. We can even use this point, uh, which is 1, 1, and this point, which is 2 and minus 1. So let's choose this one, 1 and 1, 2 and minus 1. And I'm going to write down over here that for G, I'm choosing two points, 2 and minus 1. And then I'm working with 1 and 1. And you also do the second one minus the first one. So this is going to be which point comes second. This point comes second. x2, y2 equals, right? And then which point comes first? x1, y1. Order matters here. Or else you're gonna, you might mess up with the sign. 
So then the slope will be the ratio. Y2 minus Y1 gives me minus 1 minus 1, right? Over X2 minus X1, which is 2 minus 1. Which gives me minus 1 and minus 1. Minus 2. And let me see. It's going to be minus 2 over 1. Which is a correct answer. Okay, that's good. I just checked with my notes. So this is my G prime at 1. Which is minus 2. And it's negative. It's exactly like we expected. Now the other one, which is going to be F f prime at 1. Let's choose two other convenient points, but this time for the blue line. This one is good. 0, 0 is always the best point to choose. And next point, you can do this one if you want. What is this? This is 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 3, 3. Anything like that. Now take the second one. So it's going to be 3, second rise minus first rise over second run minus first run. And it's going to be 1. So slope here is 1, f prime at 1 is 1. Now we can plug the missing uh, numbers here. I will put them in a purple color. f prime at 1 is 1, g prime at 1 was negative 2. And we can complete the formula. So it's going to be 1 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2. That is 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. So the answer is minus 1. And that was the first answer. That was A. A. B asks to find derivative of a V at 1. But V is given over here. B and A. V is F over G. So that's quotient rule. I can even write down for you. F at 1 over g at 1, everything prime. That's quotient rule. Quotient rule, I usually start with squaring the denominator, so I'm going to square the denominator. Remember, it's all at 1. Then take the derivative of the numerator, that's f prime at 1, copy the denominator, minus, that's part of the formula, be careful with that. Now, f, copy the numerator at 1 times, derivative of the denominator at 1, order here matters. So try to remember the formula with the correct order. Put it in the green box because this is what we're looking for. And now carefully plug in all the numbers. You can take the pencil and write down everything we know. For example, f prime at 1 is 1. We know that. And g prime at 1 is minus 2. Now, g at 1 is also 1. f at 1 is also 1. g at 1 is 1 and square gives you still 1. So the numbers will be 1 times 1 minus 1 times negative 2 over 1. That 1 squared if you want, but 1 squared is just 1. Gives you 3 because I have 1 plus 2. That's 3. So the answer is 3. Then I can write down if I want to. Solution or answer. For the first one, the answer was minus 1. For the second, the answer is 3. And that's how you work with problems like this using the graph. Remember that the function can be given as the expression like f of x equals x squared plus 3. As the table, uh, if you've never seen the table, I can show you f. Uh, you have inputs x, inputs x, and outputs say f of x or g of x or m of x. And then you will have some inputs and then you'll have some outputs, like 100, pi, and so on. So a function can be given as a table or basically a list of data. That's how data science was created. And like in this example, the function can be given as the graph. And you need to learn how to work with all of these types of representation. Well, hopefully it was helpful and see you next time.